Beijing is <coughs> grappling with a mounting debt crisis as investors ramp up calls for fiscal stimulus to boost the economy. So far, the government's actions have been underwhelming, to say the least, at least when you're considering it from the market's point of view. And joining us right now is CNBC contributor Michelle Caruso Cabrera. Uh, Michelle, people talked about this surprise uh, rate cut that came from China. The surprise was it was so small. Right. Uh, I think it's an acknowledgement that uh, a rate cut probably wouldn't have helped that much. China has a massive debt problem. And when you have a huge debt problem, when someone's extremely indebted, cutting rates on a future loan that they're never going to take is worthless, right? I mean, when you think about the scale of China's debt problem, their bank assets, that's how many loans they have, 54 trillion at the end of 2022. They have a smaller economy than the United States, and bank loans in this country are 23 trillion, roughly half. When you have that much debt, the question that China faces is how are they going to handle it? Are they going to have a full on debt crisis? Or are they going to have a big balance sheet recession like Japan had, which means you wait for years and years for people to pay off as they extend and pretend. And when people are paying off old loans that aren't that good or are getting restructured, they don't have money to do other things like buy a car or do whatever they would do with that money. So I mean, they're, they're, they're in a heap of trouble. They're in a heap of economic trouble. And, and couple of things. So we need them to do better for, for the Look global economy. Right? right. We need them to do better. But then again, what does it mean? She's still popular. No one's saying that he's not. But, you know, the, the, the economic story was part of his, you know, what, what, what he could rest his laurels on. And that's clearly not not 800 million right. people that they brought out of poverty in China. But, so what does that mean, Taiwan? Oh, in what, terms of what they, what they do? He's going to mess with them. I mean, he, th he's going to do things based on this that aren't economically related to, to keep his profile high. And I don't know what that means. Balloons, farmland, South China Sea, oh, I, I, Taiwan. I think, I, I think a lot of it depends on us. how they handle their debt situation, right? Because when you have this debt situation, you can't use that money for other things. Do they do restructurings? Uh, for all of their local but governments. You don't think it makes them more aggressive on the world stage? I think it's very hard to know what Xi Jinping is thinking. There's a lot of Xi thought out there, but if you've read it consistently for the last 10 years since he's come to power, which is what I've done. Remember, I used to be your chief international correspondent. I paid very close attention to everything he said. But you don't know what he thinks. Some rights. days he's really a supportive of a market economy, and then other days, no, no that, he's a total this statist. Is a, he owns this because a couple of, That's two right. or three years ago, he pulled in, you know, he, he reversed a lot of the Deng Xiaoping. Uh, oh, yeah, I think, that's, I think that's sort of as, where as you, soon as he This came is where in. you end up. But if he, if he doesn't have bragging rights on the 6 7% GDP that they already have, what, what's he got? He's not helping. Right. How many people are left? Becky mentioned 800 million out Just of poverty. 800 million more to go. 800 million yeah. more to go. Yeah. And empty apartment buildings and stadiums. Mm -hmm. so, the, so they have two problems, right? The immediate problem is the debt problem. How do they handle that? One. Two, they've started to change the structure of their economy away from all those reforms that started in 1978, which means they don't have the ability to grow to, in order to pay back that debt, right? So that, that's the double-handed, uh, double-fisted problem that they face. And, and, and I, I'm not sure he realizes that. That, that would be... Because here's the thing about, about... This article yeah, about yeah. them be, being the new Japan and having... That sort of scenario set up. I hadn't really thought of it. In no, terms of and I hadn't before. thought of it when J Japan's GDP per capita was forty-five thousand. Yeah. When they went into a slowdown, at least they were, they were a rich. normal. They were yeah. yeah they were a high-income country. Mm -hmm. They're going into a slowdown with the GDP at twelve thousand dollars per capita. The GDP four hundred. I think it was twelve thousand. That's you're talking about the GDP per capita. Well, I wasn't talking about the total GDP. No, no, no. no. At I just clear. But yeah, <laughs> which means they never got to a. That'd it really country. suck if their whole GDP was twelve. $12,800. But for the, you know, for the novice view. No, I know. But yeah, but think about that. We're 76000 mm -hmm. in the United States. People that look askance at us. But um, I don't know. I, but I, what I'm trying to figure out, and I feel for China, I feel for its, its citizenry, but yeah. I'm really trying to figure out what, what it, it means, means for us. us. So economically, it, it means a lot because all you have to do is look at, B, you know, BHP is not an American company, but them talking about what they thought was the economic compact that they had with China. We will invest a lot there. We'll help you grow. And now China's doing things, all the reversals that you're talking about, that don't lead them to grow, right? So it leads to lower earnings. Also a debt crisis. Look no further than Park Avenue, 
where the Waldorf Astoria has been temporarily closed since 2017, since Anbang Insurance went bust because they were over leveraged, right? To the degree that China has assets around the world that they have invested in, the same way the Japanese did, remember when they owned 30 Rock, what, what is the implication here? Those are the kind of... Can you short, uh, what does it mean for companies Australia, like Caterpillar? What does it mean for... Exactly. Any of the car companies that have gone in and put things in here? It's not good. It's not good. Yeah. All of the assumptions that people made, investors made, for 30 years that China was going to grow because they were going to reduce the role of government in the economy. Right. Yeah. That's all been reversed. I would argue it's, it's not just the last three years. It started a little bit under Hu Jintao. When, when I sat here and did stories for you about the shift from who and when to Xi and Li, that moment, yeah. already we had talked about a lost decade of financial reform in China, that they had really stopped. And, and we should have all realized then, but we didn't, that this was a clue of more to come. They just weren't going to go as far as so many people had wanted them to go in order to have a more dynamic economy. Yeah, weird, in other words, China is now propping up Russia. That's the only place Russia is getting... Cover uh, of the uh, journal So today. you got those two, uh, that unholy alliance between those two. Oh, and, well, and then, but you would say are bad actors, really. And, and it goes beyond that. So um, she is off to this BRICS summit. You know, he's getting together with South Africa. That's a disaster of an economy. Uh, I mentioned I mean, Australia briefly. So they, they're totally tied to China, aren't they? They're they are. They didn't go into a recession for 20 years yeah. because of the growth. Um, and it's one of the reasons why the United States has really reached out to them and now has this AUKUS alliance between Australia, the U.K., and the U.S., because they need to help Australia when it comes to deterrence, when it comes to helping them, because uh, they're right there, right? I mean, they have so much exposure both geographically and economically.